the process of building to beyond 2015 is a unique opportunity for a dialogue between citizens globally about where we want to go and how we are going to get there. It is, for me, a way of moving beyond what uh, we were talking about yesterday with Hans Rosling, moving beyond a development project to a world project. And I think we need to take this really, really seriously. And I suppose my preliminary response to Paul, many of the things he said make sense to me, but I would like us to think much more critically about North and South as these concepts. We have got to start taking seriously the work we need to do around these ideas if global citizenship is going to be any kind of reality. Now, it seems to me, it, it seems intuitive. Citizen engagement is, is a thing that people say, oh, well, we have to engage citizens. It seems like we always, let's engage citizens. But the history of development over the last 50 years so shows that that participation has been appropriated, it has been misused to legitimate a set of practices. So I would like to make two points, which are what I think the beyond, two, beyond 2015 process should not be. My first is, we must be incredibly careful that civic participation does not become a process of legitimizing something that in reality is concealing continued processes of marginalization. I can say I've been, I've been working in India and Peru and various places over the last few years, talking to activists who have said to me that they feel they are being used to justify higher processes. And I thought this yesterday, it was a very nice meal yesterday evening, I'm sure many of us enjoyed it. And the activists I have spoken to in India two years ago said to me, you know, I am brought into these processes. I get to go to these big high-level conferences once. I'm brought in, then I go home. I don't get invited again. My name has been used, it served the process, it served the purpose, but I don't come again. It'd be interesting how many of, in this, how many of us in this room have been to many of these kinds of dialogues and many of these kinds of conferences, because we should be thinking, as John Patrick said, about who isn't here and when they're shut out, why they're shut out. My second exclusion is that we keep hearing about global campaigns. I think global campaigns serve a very useful process. But let's not kid ourselves. Global campaigns are not always about democracy and participation. They are often defined policy objective in which, again, citizens are brought into play to achieve a particular strategic goal. They are not of necessity democratic, so let us be careful. So what do I think should be done? I think the process is an absolutely unique, in development history, unique opportunity to change the terrain, the language, and the realities of development. Because let's be honest, the rise of the BRIC countries, austerity in the global north, persistent extreme poverty, those realities are changing. So let us not come up with a process and a system that appears to resemble what we were doing 20 years ago, that uses the same languages, that uses the same imaginary of the world, that uses this worldview that Hans Rosling said is 40 years out of date. We have got to use this imaginatively. I think the process in itself is important. I am not saying I'm against objectives, targets, about post-2015, but the process is an opportunity. And I think it is a way of using citizen engagement to challenge the existing development order. And how I think that could be done is perhaps going to sound a little bit unfashionable. I think that development education can be an engine for this change, but not Development education has, has been traditionally understood as educating people in the global north about development. I don't think we're there anymore. And I think there are many practitioners, and practitioners in this room who will agree with me. If we understand development education as about a global conversation in north, south, east, west, I don't mind where, about what matters, about what is important, 
then we really start the process. And you know, th this may sound very romantic, but Mr. Barroso said yesterday, and I'm not sure I would share a view, I wouldn't say it was necessarily a platform for radical politics in the, in the roundup speech yesterday. He said, I quote, we can find common aspirations in every human being. If we can find common aspirations in every human being, then every human being should be being brought into the process and talking together. So, some final practical things. It seems to me this process of conversation opens up the possibility of transformation, but not transformation in the global south. Transformation in the global north, because to be honest, let's be honest, that's where the change really, really needs to get going. Transformation in middle-income countries, transformation full stop. Let's not organize it geographically. I think we've spoken and I've read many of the reviews of the MDG process about how nation states are, how negotiating through nation states is a challenge, how balancing nation states, global governance is a challenge. Get citizens across the world to talk to each other. They will come up with some really good thematic priorities, because they will say what matters to them, they will explore what's different between them, they will explore what's shared. That gives us a real platform for transformation, because it is owned and it is led from the bottom up. I think, just a final comment, I think genuinely that non-government organisations are critically important in this process. I am concerned that the process will involve a situation where people say, we consulted this NGO, so we've consulted civil society. We have to make sure that is not enough. That cannot be good enough. And I think international NGOs are in a unique position about making these connections, north, south, east, west, however we want to talk about it. I think we can think about mirrored processes of consultation, global north, global south, wherever. It cannot just be a process of consultation in the global south. It has got to be a global process of consultation. I think country platforms within countries need to be working together, Global North, Global South. I don't mind where for these processes. And yes, social media. I cannot believe we're in a sense so far behind the game if you looked at what's happened in the last few years. We can use those social media and we should use them. I think of really simple examples in my daughter's school where in a sense, you know, she has conversations with people in sub-Saharan Africa via video links, they share ideas, they share interests. Little things like that are so important and so powerful and we mustn't forget them. So my final remark really is that in this process, surely we cannot use citizen participation for a higher purpose. Surely the critical issue here is that the citizens are the higher purpose and that's what we need to be thinking about.